Now, what would you say if I told you that using a few simple words at strategically placed teachable moments can extinguish conduct disorder in young children? Conduct disorder is hitting, pushing, destructive behavior, and it qualifies as conduct disorder if it, if it happens too often and it happens in different settings. Now, it's what you would recognize as antisocial behavior disorder uh, in the young children, which is the opposite of social behavior. So I see we have a problem with the slides. That's OK. I can continue to talk through it. Now, my research comes from preschool in New Zealand. I have an American accent. So why am I in New Zealand? I don't know. I just went walkabout, and I've been there for 26 years. OK? <clears throat> and I almost came to Tasmania. But uh, let's see. Well, now let's go back to the title. You weren't supposed to see that. That's OK. So why is conduct disorder so important in young children? Well, if it continues and no one does anything about it, this is what it ends up looking like. The children end up in prison if nobody does anything to change it. One in five children that are diagnosed with conduct disorder at five or six years old, one in five of those children will end up in prison costing millions of dollars. Not just, this is just in dollar terms. Never mind the emotional effect on their families and communities and the waste of a young life. And how do they get there? Well, there's a well-known conduit. It's called the school to prison pipeline. Now, you can actually stop conduct disorder anywhere in that whole trajectory. The later, the more expensive, the more difficult. So get in early. So getting in early, where do we start? Now, the youth court judge in New Zealand, Andrew Beecroft, spent 20 years watching family conferencing in the court. And he also studied the research. And what he said in 2009, after this 20 years of watching what was the stories in the conferencing of the families, what he said was that offending in youth can be traced back to, to early childhood, the pivotal years. What he said was these are the pivotal years, all offending. And you know what this looks like. Early years, this is what can happen in a school preschool. So what went wrong in the early years? Also, according to Judge Beecroft, all the serious and violent offending can be traced directly back to conduct disorder. So, and this is based on research, not just from New Zealand, but from around the world. And you know what that looks like. So the parents, the teachers, everybody's saying, what do we do at that time? So what we'd like to do is to give teachers in preschools additional strategies. So in my research, I had some friends who came up and they said, this particular program works really, really well. And they said, I said, how do you know? They said, the principal said this, and the teacher said that, and lots of people said wonderful things. I said, but where's the evidence? Give me some data. And there wasn't any in the whole world that's really independent observers in a school saying that this works. So what are these strategies that we're going to give the teachers? Well, teachers struggle too, even though they're well trained. They need additional strategies to deal with this kind of thing. And the time to do it is in conversations when the children are calm and their brains are working really well and they can actually learn something. In the first slide, when children are in that way, it's no point in trying to teach them anything. So it's called the Virtues Project. And we did the training in a preschool. And here are the trainers. Great job for grandparents. And this is actual my research preschool, and the teachers are practicing this language on each other, which they're going to use on the children. So it's a language intervention. And it takes a natural language that exists with everybody and every culture in the whole world, and it just makes it more pervasive, more targeted, more consistent, and more persistent. That's why it's so easy to learn. Now, when this happens, the teacher, if she's done her previous work, or the parent, can say, what the preferred behavior 
Psychologists call this the alternative preferred behavior. But the time to catch them is when they're actually calm and having fun. Then you notice what they're doing right. Don't wait till what they're doing wrong. Catch them when they're doing something right. And at this point, you name the behavior with a simple single word, which we call a virtue word. That was helpful. That was kind. That was very patient of you. You're playing with your toy very gently. You're play, petting the cat very gently. Now, the children le learns very important things at this point. One, you don't have to define it. They know in the behavioral terms of themselves at three and four or five years old, without any written instructions, they know what they have done. So they know what it means when you say helpfulness. And you keep saying it in lots of places, they know all kinds of different helpfulnesses. They're building a concept of helpfulness. Then, the second thing they know is they have this capacity within them because they've been caught doing it. You caught them doing it. They know they can do it. And the third thing they know that's very important is that this is valued in this context. And if the parents and the teachers both use the same words, the child's whole world, basically, is that this is an important thing. Then when things go wrong, like that, then you can say, be gentle, be kind, be patient, and play with the toy later. And you call out the virtue that they know they have within them. And it works amazingly well once you've done your homework previously. And it, if you don't do this, then it causes harm and distress. And that's not a time to teach a child anything. So in order to study this, I had to observe antisocial behavior. And we had to have independent people. So I got another grandparent who was also a student, had gotten into the difficult to get into child and family psychology course at University of Canterbury in Christchurch, where I'm from. And there are 70 people who apply for this job. And I was told, you're not going to get into that, Derek. You're not going to get into that course. Well, that's just a red rag to a bull. So I went and I worked in all kinds of situations to prove that I could actually do this. So I had an independent observer who didn't have friends, who had never been told anything about the Virtues Project. And we had very good agreement on what we saw. So the slide I'm going to show you is our measurement of actual behavior. And the teachers didn't know who we were looking at. So they didn't know which were the nine children that we were going to study. So this is called a double blind. And it's a very powerful research method because we have nine children. Each child is a, an experiment in, in when you change their environment to see what happened. It's called single subject design. I just said that in case there's some academics who watch this. And it's, this one is just a graph of one child's antisocial behavior. Now I have to explain it a little bit. This is the baseline, and this is before anybody knew what we were doing. The teachers at this point didn't even know we were going to intervene with a thing called the Virtues Project. We kept them naive. We told them why, because we didn't want them to Google it and find out what we were going to do. So we wanted what was happening before. And this is the baseline. This child, these are 20-minute sets of observations, each dot, and that's in seconds of antisocial behavior. So before the intervention, <coughs> you can see that there's a fair amount of antisocial behavior in these 20 minutes of observation. This line here, whoops, what happened? OK, get back to it. This line here represents six hours of training. And you saw that actually happening in the preschool on a Saturday morning. Immediately, the antisocial behavior drops off and gets less and less frequent. And then this line here, this is three months. And this is a six-month follow-up. And these dots here, we actually watched this particular child every day of the week for a long, long time. Because my, re my supervisor said, you, I said, how long do I have to watch? Watch until you see antisocial behavior. Then you know how many seconds per days. And there wasn't any. This is amazing. OK, so that's good news. Now, we also measured shy and withdrawn behavior, which is the opposite of social behavior, because that's also a problem, and it causes mood disorders if there's too much of it. And you know, the child is sad. And if this happens too much, then this can develop into a problem. So we measured this, too. Now, this is the same child. And this is the shy, shy behavior down here. And this is the social behavior. They're actually opposites of each other. In the baseline, the child was very social, but you saw before that she was using bullying. Then during the intervention, her social behavior dropped off, and she got very shy. She didn't know what to do. It took a little while to learn. 
and then it stabilized, and then in the follow-up, she's even more social than she was before. But now, from the previous slide, we know that there is no antisocial behavior. So no antisocial behavior, high levels of social, uh, social behavior, this is really good. And this was six months later. Now this point here, A, is after five weeks. And there was a booster session, two hours. And you'll notice here that everything got stabilized in the, in the sh started to really get stabilized. And the frequency of the antisocial behavior dropped off. You see two dots, three dots. Those are with, with no antisocial behavior. So things really started to get better right here after five weeks. And when children are social, they can learn together. Is this a good idea? Who likes it? They like it. OK. Here's another child. This child, very high levels of antisocial behavior, drops off very dramatically, and then everything's better. However, this child also had some shy behavior, which was a problem. And at this point A right here, everything got better. A little bit of a challenge there. A particular thing happened in her life. But here we've got a very good situation again. Now, here's another child. This child was one of the shy children. No antisocial behavior whatsoever. But very shy, problematic. At point A, five weeks later, magic. So this is very powerful. Six hours of training, a two-hour booster session, and away we go. All nine children got better at this point got stabilized, all nine of them, at this point. That's a very powerful design, research design, to see that. Now, what was exciting, which we didn't expect, was the parents came in and they said, what have you done to our child? My husband and I were arguing, and our daughter, four years old, said, you two need to show respect for each other. <laughs> it's true. Another parent came in and said, hey, what have you done to my child? I said she was a good girl. And she said to me, that's not enough. Tell me how I've been good. <laughs> OK. So teachers love to teach. <clears throat> and parents, at this vulnerable age, when they don't know what to do with their first child, are teachable. It's a perfect combination. So the parents in this preschool, more of them showed up for training in the Virtues Project in an evening than had showed up for any Christmas barbecue. Now, you get a New Zealander to show up for training in the evening that's more, more of them and the fathers than a Christmas barbecue, then you've really got some, somebody's attention here. Now, humans are born to be good. I won't go into that, but there's a huge pile of research. There's books all over the place. There's a lot of research that shows that this is true. Our brain evolved in the presence of social situations. And cooperation is why groups survived. Groups of human beings survive by their degree of cooperation. So we're built for this. Now, these guys here, you would think this is a really difficult population. Most of these guys are life imprisoned. And I won't give you the list of what they've done to become lifers. This is in Fiji. OK? But even these boys, you get the right kind of person in there and train them and find some virtues in them, and they get really excited, because now they can actually give something back. So these guys train the new prisoners who are not lifers and tell them, don't be like me. I'll tell you how to do this. So they taught the guards and the prisoners to talk to each other with the virtues language. This is in Fiji. But this has been done in Seattle, Texas, Canada, and the Cook Islands. Some of them are my friends. Now, what kind of person is going to go in there and do this? What do you think? Well, the most dangerous person on the planet is a grandmother. <laughs> That's a Canadian grandmother. There's another lady who looks something like that with the white hair. And she's a New Zealander. And they're in Fiji for some other reasons. So for fun, we're going to go into 20 prisons, men and women, and we're going to change everything. And again, something unexpected happened. What happened that was unexpected? The guards came to the grandmother with the white hair, and said, you know, I can't teach virtues in the prison and then go home and beat my wife. And he stopped doing that. And more than one guard came and said this kind of thing. OK? What has started is a social epidemic. What has started is something that's very exciting to me, 
as a 64-year-old grandfather of seven in my second reincarnation or my second life, <clears throat> I'm going to have some fun. And this is very exciting. Wouldn't you say? The effect size is very large. There are some researchers who didn't believe what had happened. They gave me a very poor grade, but we took it to some other people and they said, that's fantastic. So you have to be careful who you ask. Is it a good plan? Yes. Who's happy about this? These guys. Who can learn about it? You can learn about it. It's so simple and it's so easy and it's so much fun. So go to this website if you want to learn about it. Virtuesproject.com. It's in 100 countries. 10,000 facilitators have been trained. It's all continents of the world. You can go to the website and find who's near you who can train you, or you can learn a lot of stuff online. So, has this inspired you? Has it given you hope for humanity? Is it giving you something to act on? I hope so. But thank you very much for being able to share this with you.